What's going on everyone? You're back with your boy Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to find the x and y intercepts of a line, but from an equation. The reason we're going to do this is because we can graph something incredibly easy if we've got these two points. That's actually the best part about linear relationships. If you've got two points, because we know for sure it's a dead straight line, you just have to join them together. Obviously with a ruler to make sure it's perfect, but if you've got two points that you know for sure are part of your graph, chuck them down and just draw a line between them. Finding the two points is like the hard part, but we actually have nothing to worry about. The reason that I've underlined nothing there is because zero is actually our best friend for this whole topic. If you can multiply a number by zero, you're gonna find this pretty cruisy. So we know for sure all of the lines that we're gonna look at definitely cross the y-axis and the x-axis because it's a diagonal line. This means at some point y is always equal to zero and x is always equal to zero. Just a note there, when I say all lines, I mean all diagonal lines. Just as a little note there, horizontal and vertical lines do only cross one axis. I just mean all diagonal lines. So just make sure you know that as we move forward. So the y-axis, any point on the y-axis, anything that's on that vertical axis, x is definitely equal to zero because the minute you move off it, you're no longer on the middle line. You're no longer on the y-axis. And the x-axis, the same thing applies. At every point, y is equal to zero. If you go up one, well, well, y is not zero anymore. So we can use this knowledge that y is definitely zero or x is definitely zero to really help us find the other intercept. So all we've got to do is sub in zero twice. So if you're trying to find the y-axis, you sub in x is equal to zero. And if you're trying to find the x-axis, you sub in y is equal to zero. That's the only trick that we need for this whole topic. So if we have a look at an equation here, y is equal to two x minus four, we want to find the y-axis and the x-axis, and that'll help us graph this without having to worry about the gradient at all. So we're going to find the y-axis first. We have actually done this before, but we're just going to use substitution to really hammer this point home. So on the y-axis, I know for sure x is definitely equal to zero. So I've got y is equal to two multiplied by zero minus four. That means y is equal to negative four. That's all you've got to do. Just remember that the y-intercept is not just one number. It's not just minus four. It's still a coordinate. And the coordinate for the y-intercept here is zero comma negative four. Then to find the x-axis, all we've got to do is the exact same, but y is equal to zero this time, not x. So this means that I've got zero is equal to two x minus four. Because I need to find out what x is by itself, I'm gonna to have to do some formula rearranging. I start with whatever's furthest away and do the opposite operation. So because I've got zero is equal to two x minus four, I've got a plus four to both sides. Now I've got four is equal to two x, and I'm gonna divide both sides by two. This is just equal to x is equal to two. Again, the x-intercept has to be a point, not just one number. So the coordinate for this is two comma zero, because I'm across two, but not up and down. So because I know that the y-axis is zero negative four and the x-axis is two comma zero, I can just plot those two points straight away and then all we've got to do is connect them with a ruler. So this is perfectly correct. I didn't have to find the gradient. I didn't have to go up two across one. I've got my two points there, definitely a straight line because it's linear relationships and we're done. So this might just take out a little bit of work for you moving forward, find the intercepts, join them up with a ruler. Just another example here, we've got y is equal to negative three x plus five. Again, we're gonna sub zero into both sides, but I'm gonna find the y-axis first. So I've got y is equal to negative three times zero plus five, y is equal to five. So that means my coordinate of the y-intercept is zero comma five, done. Then for the x-intercept, I've got y is equal to negative three x plus five. Again, I've gotta find x by itself, so I deal with whatever's furthest away from the x and do the opposite. Now I've got negative five is equal to negative three x. I've got to divide both sides by negative three. So I've got negative five divided by negative three. The two negatives cancel each other out and I'm just left with x is equal to five over three. This is something I would highly recommend throwing into your calculator so you can get a number. It's gonna be a decimal point, but it will tell you where the point is gonna be. Five over three is a little bit more difficult. So typing five over three into my calculator gives me the answer of 1.6666 repeated. So the x-intercept is at 1.66 comma zero, done. Just as a reminder, when you do graph this out, because it's got a negative gradient, the negative three x, we just have to make sure that our line is still going downhill when we plot this point. It's just a really good way to check that you got the answer correct 
especially when you're dividing by two negatives, because sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. So just knowing this is definitely going downhill will really help you out. So I've got my two points. Once I plot those, I just have to connect them with a ruler. 0,5 is all the way up here, and then 1.66 is obviously in between the one and two, a little bit closer to the two side. Once I've got those points down, straight line. We can see that this is going downhill, so we know we're on the money. To be fair, we could definitely check that this is exactly correct because we're at 0, 0.5, I could go down three across one, and yep, that point's on the line as well. So that's another way to look at it, but if I just find these two points, I can just throw a line between them, done. The best thing about this is this works, even if we're not in our y equals mx plus c. So for this one, you might be thinking, oh crap, I've got to rearrange this whole thing, get y by itself, that's going to take a lot of time. But you don't need to. Already we know that we can sub in zero twice, just transpose the equation, find out what the unknown is, and that's enough work. So for the y-axis, I know that x is equal to zero. I already know that four times zero is zero, so I'm just gonna get rid of that x straight away. Now I'm just left with negative three y plus two is equal to zero. To get y by itself, I've got a minus two to the other side, negative three y is equal to negative two. Divide both sides by negative three, y is equal to two over three remembering that those negatives do cancel out. Two over three is the same as 0 0.66 repeater, so the y-intercept is at zero comma 0 0.66. So now for the x-axis, I know that I've got to sub in y is equal to zero, so I'm not actually gonna write it out. I know that three times zero is zero, so I can just ignore it. This leaves me with four x plus two is equal to zero. Minus two from both sides, I've got four x is equal to negative two. Divide both sides by four, and I've got x is equal to negative two over four. That's the same as negative a half or negative 0.5. So my x-intercept is going to be at negative 0.50. That's all the work I've got to do. Now I've just got to plot these two points. 0.66 is up a little bit, just a little bit more than half. And then negative 0.5 is exactly half a square over to the left. I've got those two points in. Even though they're really close together, I can see how they would line up in a straight line. Once I've got my ruler through it, I'm done. That's all the work I've got to do. So the only thing you really need to remember for this lesson is that if you're trying to find the y-intercept, x is equal to zero, and if you're trying to find the x-intercept, y is equal to zero. So whatever you're looking for, the other thing is equal to zero. Sub it in and find the unknown. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you soon.